Hi folks, so that's my take on an EJ uh, style idea. I'm gonna take you through it phrase by phrase and then explain a little bit about the sort of theory behind it and how you can apply it elsewhere, okay? So we're in G, we open with this idea, which is we're outlining a G triad. So we have the root note on the third fret of the E, we have the perfect fifth on the fifth fret of the A, and we have the major third on the fourth fret of the G string. So this shape is one that you'll see Eric using quite a lot. They're called open voice triads. So in other words, when you usually construct a triad, it is stacked as root third and fifth, stacked thirds. What we do with this sort of shape is we take the third and we move it an octave higher. So you get this nice spacious uh, sound. So we're gonna play that. Okay, to open our lick. We then jump right up to the kind of 10th position and we have this phrase. Okay, which uh, starts with the 13th fret of the B string. And then we have one of these sitar type bends where we go from the perfect fourth to the major third and we very quickly bend and release the 12th fret of the B. So we get, so that's the 13th fret of the B followed by the 12th fret being bent and released very quickly. Okay, and then we walk up this position of the pentatonic scale, uh, which in this case is 13th fret of the B string 10th fret of the E string, and then 12th fret of the E string. Okay, now begins um, our, uh, probably one of the most recognizable traits of Eric's playing this sort of descending fifths thing. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna show you the notes first, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna pick it. Um, we are, uh, again, kind of essentially just descending down a G major pentatonic scale. It's the same shape that's shared by the E minor pentatonic scale, so it's going to feel very familiar to you. We start at the 15th fret and we descend five notes. So that's uh, 15th fret of the E, 12th fret of the E, 15th fret of the B, 12th fret of the B, and then 14th fret of the G string. Now we jump up to the 15th fret of the B string and we descend another five notes. So we get. Okay, so that second phrase is 15th fret of the B, 12th fret of the B, 14th, 12th of the G, and then 14th of the D. So you're starting to see the pattern emerging here. We're gonna do the same thing again, which is again starting on the 14th fret of the G this time, 14th, 12th, 14th, 12th, 14th on the A. So we should have. Okay, for the last um, part of this phrase, we break out the shape a little bit. So we start at the 14th fret of the D, come down to the 12th, then 14th, 12th on the A, but then drop down to the 10th fret. So very slowly we get. Now, the thing that's important with this is how we pick it. Um, so we're going to incorporate a degree of economy picking, um, which means that for every group of five notes, we have down, up, down, up, down, and then we're gonna push through to the next string with another down stroke. So we get down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, and it's that kind of pushing through across two strings, which helps create that sort of cascading um, fluid sound, which we're going for. But when you're practicing it, start really slow. And what you're trying to do is make sure that every time you cross those two strings, it's, it's one movement. You're not gonna attack each string individually. You are pushing through like that. It's kind of like a mini sweep, I guess you could say. So, so far we should have. <laughs> Now, um, we are going to reiterate the idea that we started with. So at the 10th fret of the A, we're gonna bring back this open voice triad idea that we opened the lick with. So in this case, it is the uh, 10th fret of the A, 12th fret of the D, and 12th fret of the B. 
We're then going to move up to a minor open voice triad from A. So we have the 12th fret of the A string, the 14th fret of the D, and the 13th fret of the B. And then we're going to finish this phrase with a B flat major triad, again, voiced in the same way. So we have 13th fret of the A, 15th fret of the D, and 15th fret of the B. So that little block is... And then just to conclude this, we'll jump back down the neck to our root note on the 5th fret of the D string, slide up to the major 2nd at the 7th fret and back down, hit our root note, and then finish with a big Cliffs of Dover style uh, wide bend at the um, 18th fret of the B string. So all together we should have... So just to talk a little bit about the sort of uh, theory behind the lick, I guess, we are centered around G. And um, I was kind of thinking of a G mixolydian idea, which in this case is kind of a mixture of um, G major pentatonic and G minor pentatonic. If you took both those scales and smushed them together, we would have the G mixolydian mode but with the addition of a flat three in there. So this means that this sort of lick is gonna work great over dominant seventh chords. Um, it's also gonna work great in songs that are centered around the five chord. Now, don't worry if you don't know exactly what I mean. I'm gonna do um, a separate lesson on modes, but just to give you an example, um, if we have the key of C major, which has the chords C major, D minor, E minor, F, G major, E minor, uh, B diminished, and then C. If we have that as our palette of available chords, but our song starts on a G, that means that we are playing in a mode. We're in the key of C, but we are acknowledging another one of those chords as being the tonal center, and that's what our ear hears as being home. So in this case, the lick that I've just shown you is really based in the key of C major, but centered around G, which means G mix Lydian. <laughs> What I'd always encourage you to do is think about what you can take away from the lick. So the, the kind of uh, the three EJ-isms that I'd sort of picked up on there were the open voice triad thing, which we talked about earlier. So um, instead of playing a triad like that, root, third, fifth, you rearrange the notes by moving the third an octave higher. And you get that instantly recognizable. Uh, Eric Johnson style thing. Okay, the second EJ-ism that we can nick are these um, very fast sitar-like bends. So, uh, Ian Thorny from Big Rec is another big user of this technique. And all we're really doing is taking a note, and then playing uh, the interval down from it, bending up to the original pitch, and then releasing very quickly. It works best where you've got a half step in the scale. So in this case, we have uh, between the flat seven and the six, or the sixth and the fifth fret on the B works well, and between the perfect fourth and the major third, which is the uh, fifth and the fourth fret of the G string. And then finally we have the descending fives idea. Um, that's gonna serve you equally well in major and minor pentatonic scenarios, so. So that's using the same pattern, but in like a minor pentatonic scale rather than a major, but exactly the same fingering, exactly the same picking. Um, that's something that you can start using right away. Just take your time when you're building the speed up with it and make sure that you stay really relaxed with your right hand. Um, the other thing that can help with that a little bit is uh, tilting your pick slightly forward and also angling it so you've got less resistance when you're picking the passages. Cool, I hope you've enjoyed this lick. Uh, this will be the first of many. Uh, take it, learn it, go and try and 
bend it into some different scenarios, incorporate it to your own licks, make it your own. Okay guys, see you next time.